Happy New Year. This is Nature Center YouTube channel. Welcome to 2023 and to kick off a brand new year we're celebrating new years so uh, everyone rolled their eyes when I said that pun but you know what it's funny and I'm running with it so to kick off the year we are meeting some newts uh, we have three newts at the center or three species of newts newts used to be like really super common as pets uh, as a kid, that was I wasn't allowed snakes, I wasn't allowed lizards, but I got to have newts. We had two uh, Japanese fire-bellied newts, and two, uh, they were called uh, Pacific newts or Oregon newts, they're also called br uh, brown rough skin newts, which I think are actually protected now. I haven't seen those pets in forever. Uh, they were awesome. Uh, I loved our, especially the rough skins. They had like bright orange stomachs and brown on the back. They were really cool looking. Uh, nowadays, uh, well, you certainly can't get a newt for $10 anymore. Um, things like chytrid fungus and different amphibian diseases as have actually limited the export and import of a lot of newts uh, into Canada, at least. I'm not sure how it is in the U.S. or other countries. Um, so any of the ones here are typically going to be captive bred here in Canada, and they are getting harder and harder to find. So where there used to be a plethora of newts, uh, now it's fairly limited. So, uh, one of the things about newts, although our last two kind of break these rules, a lot of newts are aquatic or semi-aquatic, so they're gonna spend most of their time in water or underwater, and the Iberian newt, or Spanish ribbed newt, is one of those examples. So, this guy here, we've actually had for um, 12 years, 13 years, um, so quite a while. Uh, these are the largest of the European newts. Um, in the wild, they can get uh, over 12 inches, but in captivity, for whatever reason, they tend to stay smaller. Uh, these guys are found in Morocco and Iberia, so down in like southern and southern Spain. So that's how they get their name. And then the rib part, uh, they actually have the ability to poke their ribs through their skin. And when they do that, it actually pushes out uh, poison. They secrete a toxin. Uh, animal that's going to sort of puncture the inside of their mouth and the sensitive skin. It's not lethal by any means, but it is uh, definitely painful enough to discourage a predator from uh, continuing to try and eat them. Uh, newts and salamanders have the ability to lose their limbs and grow it back, uh, as well as their tail. So the tail. Uh, something you know, lots of different animals, especially lizards and stuff, will do. But limbs, newts and salamanders are the only ones that, act, that are vertebrates that can regrow their limbs. Spanish rib newts have been to space. Uh, there's been six different missions starting in 1985 where these, this particular species of newt has been sent up into outer space to study. Uh, the first year, 1985, there was also rhesus macaws and a couple of astronauts that went with them. And it's to study how lack of gravity affects them, um, how they eat and breed up there. Um, basically, you know, a lot of our early space missions were in part to kind of see about the likelihood and ability to, you know, take everything to other planets or take everything to space and survive. Um, which, you know, is still something that might possibly happen. Uh, although, I don't know, by this point, I expected a flying car. Thanks, Jetsons. Um, so, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. This one, obviously, itself has not been to space, but the species has. Um, these guys, uh, popular as pets, and one of the more commonly available newts you can get. Um, just, they are primarily aquatic. Uh, they do have an area they can climb out, but they spend most of their time uh, swimming underwater. So while there's lots of information about Spanish rib newts and things like Chinese firebelly newts, uh, there's next to nothing on these guys. Uh, these are called black knobby newts. 
Uh, they're really unique looking. Like their head is very flat. Their body is very flat. Their spine is basically a ridge that comes along the back. Um, they do have a bit of the bright coloring on their stomachs, but compared to like the, the actual fire belly newts, which have like black and orange uh, spots and strong red markings, they don't. So all newts are toxic. These guys are toxic. Uh, from what I kind of gather from interacting with them, this is their main form of protection, is just basically staying really, really still, not moving, and blending in and camouflaging with uh, the jungle and the forests. So these guys are found in China and Vietnam. Uh, all of the newts actually in this video are either vulnerable or near threatened. Um, so they are on that list of, of the different uh, levels of endangerment. Um, that is part of the thing of why they're becoming harder to find is because there's a lot more restriction. Uh, a lot of the ones, especially in the 80s and 90s, that were coming in by the thousands were wild caught um, because it was easier and cheaper to just go catch them and import them from Asia than putting in the time and energy and effort to actually breed them. Uh, fortunately, ones like the Spanish rib newt do breed easily, so now there is more captive bred. Um, but that is one of the challenges uh, when you're getting into exotic animals. Literally, if you Google black knobby newt, there's next to nothing about their care. There's next to nothing about, uh, there's basically, they're found in China and that's it. Um, so based on other newts and our success so far with them, we've kind of been able to determine like most newts, they are insectivores. Um, they seem to be mostly terrestrial. Um, which is unlike a lot of other newts. Uh, we didn't know that when we got them, so fortunately we didn't put them in an aquarium full of water because they could have drowned. But, uh, you know, this is not something I would suggest someone starting a pet uh, as, a, as a pet amphibian, just because there's such limited information. It seems like they're pretty hardy, but, you know, to go out and get your first pet newt and then have it die because of improper care because you don't know how to care for it, Google doesn't help, is, is really kind of tough. So. Not a newt I would recommend as a pet. With uh, Asia, we have a, a fairly commonly available newt species. This is the emperor newt or the mandarin newt. Uh, they are found in mountain regions uh, in a very small part of western China in Yuhan province. As I've talked about on the channel before, uh, bright color in nature means danger. So even though this seems like, you know, it should be an easy prey and should stand out, uh, they are nocturnal. Uh, we rarely ever see them doing much during the day, but at night, if you look at them, they're crawling around and exploring their habitat. Um, so they're gonna blend in better than in bright daylight, but these are a warning. So each of these uh, dots, these warts on their skin is a poison gland. And like the Iberian newt, they can basically push their ribs and push that out. Um, these guys are incredibly toxic. Uh, they carry enough poison to kill 7,500 mice. They are harmless to people, apparently, but certainly you don't want to be ingesting that um, if you, you know, got some of the poison on your hands and rub your eyes or something. It certainly could be quite uncomfortable. So that is how they protect themselves. They don't want to have to emit those uh, toxins. So this is just a warning. I'm brightly colored, leave me alone. I'm pretty sure I have a male and a female here. Uh, the males are a bit bigger and more robust, but you can even see with them, uh, one of them has like much larger dots. Uh, one of them has smaller dots. Um, their head coloring is a bit different. So they do have kind of individual coloring and patterning that does make them different uh, from each other. So they are another terrestrial newt, so they're gonna spend their time on the ground. They do have a water dish. Uh, in the wild, basically, they're gonna, uh, are we playing follow the leader? Uh, they're gonna spend the winter uh, on land, and then in monsoon season, when the rice paddies and areas flood, they, uh, they will go down to the water, and then they will be semi-aquatic. They will breed, uh, they will lay their eggs, the larva, the larva hatch out as aquatic, uh, the amphibians with no legs. They grow their legs, they absorb their gills, 
they emerge from the water as a little newt, and then they continue to go from there, and the cycle begins anew. Um, so the thing about amphibians, uh, they, they're they fun to look at. They're not something you play with and cuddle. Uh, I did moisten my hands before we brought them out, uh, and you'll notice I'm doing very limited handling with them um, because their skin not only can they uh, emit toxins, which isn't going to bother me, but things on our fingers and stuff like that can actually be uh, dangerous to them. So their skin is very, very sensitive. So you can take them out to clean their habitat, uh, do things like that, but this isn't like a, oh yeah, I was playing with my newts today. Um, so yeah, that is our uh, representation of some of our newts. We have quite the, uh, quite the newtist colony at our facility. Uh, we have four of these guys, two of the nobbies, I think six of the Spanish ribbed, and definitely on the lookout for more because I do think they're really fascinating creatures and really fun to educate about. Uh, if you've enjoyed uh, seeing my newts, there's lots of other stuff you can see. Make sure you check out some of our previous videos. Uh, we've got a lot of cool amphibian videos. Here's a video on uh, some frogs and toads. And hit the subscribe button if you have not yet. Uh, hit the bell to be notified about new uh, videos. And again, I hope that you are having an awesome new year. I hope that 2023 brings you the best. We're really excited about uh, continuing to grow our channel, continuing to do our in-person programs uh, and tours throughout the year. Ferris Festival is our wildlife festival. We look forward to seeing you either here on YouTube or in person in the near future. All of our info is below for our social media, our website. We are based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and we would love to see you come and visit. So until next time, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again.